This video was made possible by Into the AM. More about them a little later on. In this video, we've got 23 RuneScape tips that you possibly didn't know, and they are guaranteed to make you a better RuneScape player. Let's get into it. You may have heard that you cannot use Death Skulls on Phase 7 of Zamorak, and that's not actually the case. As long as Zamorak chooses the B rune and it's one of the runes that you kill, you can safely use Death Skulls as long as you're standing close to the B. Once the B rune dies and comes back to life, it does not show up as a viable target, and because of that, your skulls are going to continually bounce between yourself and a Zamorak just like you would want. Invention perks are confusing and frustrating, so I totally get it if you've been putting off perking your gear but they're also a massive increase to your damage output. If you've been putting off perking your gear, here's a basic set of perks that you should be able to get relatively easily and inexpensively. They're not the best perks in the game, but it's a really good starting point. Feel free to take a screenshot and work towards these. If you want more information on perfect best in slot perks, I've also linked a wiki page in the description down below. You know the darkness incantation, the one that costs a whole bunch of runes, but makes you take a lot less damage. Well, unfortunately, if you've been using it as the base tank at Solak, at the Ambassador, or at Raziel, you've been quite simply burning your money. Darkness doesn't work at these bosses because they have 100% hit chance and it's hard locked, which means it is impossible for them to miss you. When you're the base tank at Solak, Solak cannot splash on you no matter what, so Darkness does nothing. And the exact same can be said about the Ambassador, whose range attacks, magic attack, and melee attack all cannot splash. At Raziel, all of his main attacks and his special attacks fall under the exact same category, and Darkness will not ever activate on those attacks, but it will activate on the minions. So if you're getting minions, you could use Darkness to lower that damage a little bit, but generally speaking, it's not worth it, and you want to avoid it at those three bosses. One of the strongest abilities in the game is Resonance. It's going to nullify a singular hit splat and heal you for a percentage of the damage dealt as well. At a lot of bosses, this can be the difference between having to eat a bunch of food and quite simply taking the boss's strongest mechanic and using it against it. If you don't need to get a heal, even better than Resonance is Divert. Instead of converting the damage you take to life points, it's instead going to convert that damage taken into Adrenaline, which means it can be an extremely nice way to give yourself a little bit of extra juice. When you're using magic melee or ranged, the Maniacal, Berserker, and Reckless auras are extremely powerful, offering you a 13.6% increase to your damage output as well as an absolute ton of accuracy. But this is a bit misleading, because as soon as you cast Berserk, Sunshine, or Death Swiftness, 10% of this damage buff completely turns off. And you can try it out for yourself by applying a bleed to a training dummy and then casting your damage boosting ultimate. And you'll notice that your bleed damage actually decreases. What this means for shorter boss fights is that as long as you have 100% accuracy, the Majorat Aura's 5% damage increase is actually better than the Berserker tier auras. That being said, if you're planning on style camping at a longer boss fight where the fight is going to be prolonged and there's going to be time in an ultimate and out of an ultimate, the Berserker class auras are still the best. This video is brought to you by Into the AM. They're a clothing brand that I have been wearing for over eight years. I mean, look at this picture. I literally was a kid at that point, and I've been a fan of them ever since. I first started wearing them because I was a huge fan of their all over print designs. I really like clothing that stood out and well, take a look. This is one of my first sweatshirts from Into the AM, which means I've had it for close to eight years, and it still looks as good as it did the day I got it. The design is absolutely sick, and it's completely 360 degree all over printed. Although Into the AM is known for their absolutely stunning graphic t-shirts and sweatshirts, they also have an awesome line of basics. I'm wearing one of their basic t-shirts right now, and they fit me better than any other t-shirt I've had before. Not only that, but they're extremely durable. So they look exactly the same and they hold up after years and years of heavy use. If you're someone that's into long sleeves, I even climb in mine. Into the AM has been an absolute staple of my wardrobe for years, and they could be the exact same for you. If you want to check them out and to save an additional 10% off your entire order, you can use my link that is in the description down below. Once again, thank you very much to Into the AM for sponsoring this video. And now let's get back into it. Do you want to deal an absolute ton of damage without having to use any adrenaline? Flanking 4 is a switch perk, which means you don't want to have it permanently on your gear, but it's worth switching to specifically for the abilities that it impacts. And for Necromancy, it is extremely overpowered. You can build up all of your souls as you usually would, and then swap lanterns to one with the Flanking 4 perk. As long as the flanking icon is visible on your target, enjoy hitting Soul Strike 5 times in a row and dealing upwards of 100,000 damage. Eating a solid food while in combat is going to cost you 10% adrenaline, which makes eating solids a bit of a trap. 
If you're spam eating food, you're never gonna have enough adrenaline to use powerful abilities, and the end result is gonna be a boss fight that doesn't go very well. My recommendation would be to ditch the solid food and instead use a combination of sardome and bruise, as well as blue or green blubber jellyfish. You can consume both of these types of food at the same time, and neither of them will drain your adrenaline at all. Speaking of sardome and bruise, these should also be used sparing. There's a common misconception that Although Sardom and Bruise lower your stats, your overload will completely offset those, but that's not really the case. If you look at this clip here, you're gonna notice that while I'm drinking Bruise, my stats are lower than they otherwise would be, because the overload is only gonna boost my stats back up to where they were every 15 seconds. If you want an option that isn't gonna lower your stats at all, consider using a Guthix Rest or a Super Guthix Rest. They heal a lot less, but they don't have any negative impact to your stats, which is gonna result in you dealing a lot more damage. Shield abilities are very strong, but swapping to a shield sucks. If you're 25 necromancy or above, you can use lesser bone shield, which will let you use those shield abilities without having to switch to a shield. This is extremely strong and it impacts the seven abilities that I've listed on screen. But wait, there's more. At level 73 necromancy, you gain access to greater bone shield. And based on the name, you would think that greater bone shield is better than lesser bone shield. And it also costs a lot more, but this isn't actually the case. For abilities like reflect, immortality, preparation, and rejuvenate, these work exactly the same regardless of the tier of your shield. And because of that, the only thing that's gonna be greater by using greater bone shield is the amount of money you have to waste on runes. For almost everything, lesser bone shield is all you need. Do you ever notice that sometimes people use an ultimate ability and end up coming out of it with a ton of adrenaline left over? The Ring of Vigor can be purchased from the Dungeoneering Token Shop for 50,000 tokens. The Ring of Vigor will save you adrenaline on every single ultimate and special attack you use. This is pretty strong, but if you complete the Extinction Quest, you can get this as a passive, which means you don't even need to wear the Ring of Vigor to get the benefit. It will always go with you, and you're gonna have significantly more adrenaline for the rest of your days. Are you tired of your Hellhound or Blood Reaver familiar dying all the time? I've got a great solution for you. All you need to do is drop a Prism of Restoration on the floor at your feet. It's on the Ancient Spellbook, and you can cast them infinitely. As long as your Familiar is standing close to the Prism, its life points are going to be continually brought all the way up to full, so that it can never die. If you want your Adrenaline to never drain outside of combat, you can loot the Infernal Puzzle Box from just inside the Zamorakian Undercity. If you upgrade your Puzzle Box to Tier 3 by completing the very easy requirements that I have listed on screen, your Adrenaline will no longer drain as long as the Puzzle Box is in your inventory. And if you want to take it all the way to Tier 6 by completing the Succession Quest, you can actually add it to your Tool Belt, which means it is always with you no matter what, and you never have to worry about your Adrenaline draining ever again. The Vulnerability spell will increase your damage dealt by 10%, and it lasts for one minute. If you don't want to cast it out of the normal spellbook, consider using a Vulnerability Bomb. These can be thrown with a keybind on a specific area or dropped directly onto whatever creature you're currently targeting. Although these are pretty expensive, they are extremely worthwhile in a lot of PVM scenarios because 10% damage is an absolute ton. Greater Concentrated Blast is the most powerful basic ability in the entire game. It does a lot of damage, but it also applies a critical strike buff to your next ability. Or does it? This critical strike buff only works if you do not switch weapons after your Greater Concentrated Blast. So to make sure you're not scamming yourself of your critical strike buff, you need to make sure that the ability after your greater concentrated blast is also cast with your wand and your orb. As soon as you switch to a different weapon, your buff's gonna get cleared. Have you ever wanted to boost your stats up to make something that you otherwise don't have the level to, but it's annoying having to continually get the boost over and over again? Well, I have a solution for you. In this instance, I wanna get a six level crafting boost on my Iron Man, so I'm above level 99 but it's frustrating having that boost disappear right away. So what I'm gonna do is the second I get the boost that I want, I'm gonna instantly log out. Logging out is gonna reset the time remaining on this boost to one minute, which means that as long as I keep logging out and logging back in every 59 seconds, I will never lose this boost and I can make as many supplies as I need. The Frost Cannon at Arch Glacier can be extremely difficult, especially in hard mode, where it's gonna hit you three separate times. Here are the easiest two ways of dealing with it. For the first method, we're gonna put on Deflect Magic, I'm gonna use the Anticipate ability, and I'm quite simply gonna use Devotion. That's gonna nullify all three hits, and we're good to go. Alternatively, you can use Anticipate, and then you can also use a Vitality Power Burst, as well as the Reflect ability. This is gonna reflect a lot of damage back to the Arch Glacier, so if you're trying to go quickly, this can be a nice little damage boost. If you wanna get even more fancy, you can also take off your Deflect from Magic Prayer right at the end of the Frost Cannon and use the Resonance ability to heal yourself all the way back up to full. The Icy Pillars at Arch Glacier can be extremely frustrating and difficult to deal with. It always sucks when you lose your streak to them, because they feel pretty unavoidable. 
but here's a method that will make it impossible for you to fail them. When the glacier is about to summon the Pillars of Ice, you're going to stand on the south wall, and then you're going to run all the way to the western corner of the room. At this point, you just want to wait for that beam that is closest to you to get a little bit closer. And then once it's close to hitting you, you're going to dive to the northeast all the way against the back wall. From this point, all you want to do is run towards the remaining beam along the north wall. And once it's close to hitting you, you're going to use the surge ability. The last thing you need to do is move all the way from the back north wall to the front south wall. As long as you go in a straight line, it does not matter where the pillars spawn, you will never be hit. But if that sounds like too much work, alternatively, just use the barricade ability. That's what it's made for. Next up, let's talk about archaeology relics. This is the recommended setup if you're below level 100 archaeology, and this is the maxed out setup when you're all the way at 120. Feel free to take a screenshot and use them later on. This is Nadia's Necromancy Job Gauge. It's an Alt-1 Toolkit add-on that will display all of your stacks for necromancy. It's fully customizable, and it will show the length of time on your bloat ability, your conjures, your soul stacks, as well as your necrosis stacks. If you want to see the code yourself, you can do so by checking out the link in the description down below, and if you want to add it to your Alt-1 Toolkit, all you need to do is paste this link into your Alt-1 Toolkit browser. A summoning potion or spiritual prayer potion can be used to increase the special move points of your familiar. This can be extremely useful, especially with damaging familiars like the Ripper Demon, where if you're consistently drinking these potions, you can get up to 60,000 damage per minute purely from the familiar. If you want something a little more passive with a little less work to do, consider using a summoning renewal. The Greater Sunshine and Death Swiftness abilities are a bit misleading. They're unlocked with a codex of lost knowledge and some invention components. And although the name might suggest that Greater is more powerful, that isn't really the case in this instance. The main buff from having Sunshine or Death Swiftness is a 50% increase to your damage. And the greater versions of those abilities boost your damage by the exact same amount. Greater Sunshine and Death Swiftness are functionally equivalent to the lesser version as long as you're using a planted feet switch. Upgrading these abilities is a great switch cape reduction, but the name is a little bit misleading. If you don't mind using a planted feet switch before you use your ultimate, there are likely better upgrades for you. Luck rings in RuneScape are a scam, unless you're fighting either Araxor or the Magister. These are the literal only two bosses where it is better to use a luck ring than any other upgrade that could give you additional kills per hour. Not only do they not work at all in elite dungeons, but the impact they have on your drop chance is so minuscule that a lot of the time, if you're wearing a luck ring for the entire kill and you're getting fewer kills per hour, Wearing the Luck Ring will actually get you fewer boss loots and fewer unique drops per hour. So if you're someone who's balling on a budget, ditch the Luck Ring and get something that's going to help you kill the boss faster. Boosting up your life points before a PDM hour is a great way to decrease your chance of dying. If you have the Desert Pantheon Aura, you can combine it with the Thermal Pool, either from Uglog or from Anachronia. These two buffs stack, and if you're using them both, you'll get an absolute ton of extra life points. If you don't have the Desert Pantheon Aura, you're going to instead combine the Thermal Pool with a standard Bonfire. You can either do this at the Bonfire at War's Retreat if you've filled it out, and if you haven't, all you need to do is quite simply light a log and then add five logs to it. The higher tier log you use, the more extra life points you're going to get. And that is all the time we have for this one. Do me a quick favor though. If you didn't know all of these tips, hit the like button and consider subscribing to the channel for more similar content. And if you did know every single one of these tips, I want to hear from you in the comments section down below.